Hey guys and gals, this is Cal from Dirty Weasel, and at long last, we are returning to the Skyrim Special Edition modding guide. In this video, we will be installing what I consider to be an absolute necessity for anyone that intends to mod the Special Edition fully. That would be SSE Fixes by MEH321, as it corrects a bug within the new engine that hinders frames per second on a modded game. The mod requires the use of a .dll file, and thankfully MEH321 has provided a DLL plugin loader to go with it. I've got instructions for both using Nexus Mod Manager and Special Workarounds to get it playing nice with Mod Organizer 2. Let's get started. So, here we are at the desktop, and you can see I've got a royal mess going on. I've got about six episodes worth of content I'm working on. A lot of stuff on the way, but we're going to first talk about SSE fixes. Let's go on to the Nexus and take a look. And you can see it's SSE fixes by MEH321. It is mod number 10547. And what this purports to do is it uh, fixes a problem in game code that causes low FPS with many ESP or ESM plugins installed. Also adds an option to enable OS allocators like in vanilla Skyrim, but it is disabled by default because the mod author had problems with a lowered FPS slightly happening. Uh, if you ever encounter problems, uh, make sure you chart everything down real well and let MEH321 try and figure it out. So give them all the information. What is the low FPS bug? There is a bug in the game code where if you have more than a dozen ESP or ESM plugins installed, the game frames per second will become much lower in some areas. The ESP or ESM file content does not matter at all. They can be completely empty dummy plugins with no masters. Okay. Basically, it causes low FPS in certain areas, and he described certain areas that he went and tested with and without this fix, and he noticed a 10 to 12 or even 20 frame increase in certain areas. I tested it out in the same areas he did, and I noticed about a 10 to 15 frame per second increase, and I have about uh, around 100 ESPs and ESMs loaded. I also tested on certain areas that I pinpointed as particularly bad that I tested with and without. I did notice a slight increase, a couple frames, but those were in really bad spots. And I, I knew exactly where I was looking, and I will say it did increase it. It did help overall, but don't expect miracles in certain areas. In general, it is a positive. It does work. So I would consider this as a must-have mod if you're going to be having a lot of mods in your game and a huge load order because your frames per second will progressively go down and down and down the more ESPs you add. So SESE fixes. Basically, before you can even do this, you need to have something else. And that is called the DLL plugin loader. And you're going to need to go to that mod. You're going to need to read all the instructions. And I'm going to show you where that's at right now. So we're not even going to download these mod, this mod at all until we get the DLL plugin loader installed. DLL plugin loader, also by MEH321, mod number 10546. This is the loader that you put into your main Skyrim directory that loads the SSE fixes DLL files. So you have to do this first. Now, luckily he actually documents it, you know, pretty well, and it's actually quite easy to do. And you can see how to install instructions. Basically, you're going to rename the bink w64.dll to bink w64 underscore dot dll. So there's a underscore at the end. And then you're going to create a uh, log file and then you insert the new uh, bink w64.dll from the WinRAR file or 7-zip file that should be downloading into your main directory. And we're going to show you that all right now. Um, basically, there will be instructions about what the log does, how to check if it's properly loaded, but we'll walk you through all that stuff because it's actually quite easy. So the first thing you're going to do is go to your files right here, and it is a manual download only. And there are instructions, says read instructions. There are instructions included with the mod. So download that to wherever you're doing and download that to your desktop. And of course I have it downloaded right there. DLL plugin loader right there. Let's open this up and take a look. And you can see it has that bink w64.dll file and it also has the DLL plugin loader readme.txt. 
So if you ever want to, you know, do this and you forget what I've told you, open this up, take a look at it. The instructions are exactly as you'll be seeing. So, you know, nothing to worry about there. Okay. So I'm going to close this. Actually, I'm just going to leave this off to the side here. And we're going to open up my main Skyrim special edition directory. There it is. And you can see I have mine under, installed under my G drive, under Steam, Steam Apps Common, Skyrim Special Edition. You know you're in the right spot if you have the Skyrim SE.exec and the Skyrim SE Launcher.exec. You may not have the file extensions there, but you'll notice these right here. I'll set my creation kit right there. The data file, we'll get to that when we actually do the SSE fixes, but for right now, you'll not be inserting this into your data log. So the file that we are looking for is binkw64.dll. That is the DLL file that we will be changing, we'll be renaming. So let's rename that. And all we're going to do is boop, put in an underscore right there. And that's all you need to do. And that will be a secondary extension for this to work. Then we take the new binkw64.dll and we drag it and drop it in from our WinRAR file over here into our main directory. So now you have two. You now have the new one. And you can see this is the, the one that was created by MEH321 in June 22nd. And then you have my original one that was downloaded way back in October. So now you have two. Now there's one more thing you need to do on this. You need to create a new file that's going to be the binkw64.dll log. Not .dll, DLL but the .log. So go and right click on any empty space, hit new, and you're going to create a new text document. Yes, there's your new text document. We're going to rename the whole thing. Now, what I like to do is just go ahead and let's just do this. And we are going to copy. Come on, cap. No, stop that. Let's just rename that. And we are going to copy that portion. Then we go down to our new text document. We are going to rename that and paste that in. And you see it's now binkw.64.txt. We need to also need to change that to L-O-G. It's going to give you a warning like this. If you change the file name extension, the file name may become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes, absolutely. Now what this log is going to do is going to tell you if everything loads correctly. We will have nothing to look at it right now, but it will come into play later on when we actually start to install the mod. But this is properly set up for us to install SSE fixes in whatever mod manager we're using. And we're going to take a look at both. So we can actually close that down if you want to throw away the DLL loader thing wherever I put it. Where'd it go? I don't know. Anyways, so we can now go ahead and close down our main directory. There it is. Oh, it was right behind there. Okay, so you can throw that away or you can keep it. I'll, I'll keep it because I have other things to do with it. Now, let's go back to the Nexus and we will show you the next file you need to get. And we go back to SSE fixes, the original mod we showed you. And you go to the file section. And you can see SSE fixes version two, the main file. Download that with manager or download it manually. If you're using Nexus Mod Manager or Mod Organizer, you can download that man manually. But I'm just going to download it or download it with your manager. I'm going to download it manually so I have it on my desktop so I can actually work with it. So you can see it's right there. And what do we have inside here? Well, let's take a look. We have a folder called DLL plugins, and this is kind of important. This becomes very important once we start talking about Mod Organizer 2. Inside of that plug that folder, we have FPS fix plugin.dll and the FPS fix plugin.any. The .any file is a very simple one. You can see, you know, it has some information here that you can go ahead and read through. I would say go ahead and leave this exactly as it is. The use OS allocators is a holdover from the original Skyrim, and he's finding out that he had an FPS loss. It may increase your uh, or decrease your load times between screens. I haven't found that to be the case in this application, so I left it at zero also. Now, the DLL FPS fix plugin.dll is the DLL plugin loader that we needed to just do, and we did that. So, what do we do with this? We are first going to start off with Nexus Mod Manager because this is the easiest application. I have Nexus Mod Manager open. There's nothing here, but it is for Skyrim Special Edition. 
I'm just going to take SSE fixes and drop it in. And then I'm going to activate it. Okay, now it's active. What did that do? Let's open up our Skyrim Special Edition folder again. And what it did was put something in our data folder. And you can see the DLL plugins is now there. So we open that up. You can see the two main files that we talked about right there, the plugin.dll and the plugin.ini. So it is properly set up. It's actually quite easy to do with Nexus Mod Manager. Problems come later on when we talk about adding more DLLs to this file, but for right now, that works very well. So what do we do with it? We're gonna open this back up. I'm going to actually start the game. If you check your log, there's nothing there. Now we're going to start the game. Start the game, please. Yeah, play it. Now you can see we made it to the main load screen and you don't need to go any farther than that. We can just go ahead and quit on out. Yes, thank you very much. And we're back to our screen. Now, what this has done is generated something in our log. Let's check it. Now you can see checking data slash backslash DLLP plugins, FPS fix plugin dot DLL, okay loaded. If for whatever reason that you have any message other than okay loaded, you know it's not working. You did something wrong. Go back and recheck the instructions and you did something wrong. But as far as Nexus Bond Manager, it works. It works very well, so it's very easy to do. I am actually going to uninstall this because I need it to be uninstalled from Nexus Mod Manager completely before I do anything with Mod Organizer 2. Okay, now it's gone. So we check our files again and we go into data. You can see the DLL plugin loader is gone. So, once again, reminding ourselves we have the DLL plugins folder right there. We have, still have the Bink W64.dll, the underscore.dll, and the log is still there. And every time you run the game, it will overwrite the log. So just keep that in mind. Mod Organizer 2. This is a little different. So we're going to open up Mod Organizer 2 and we'll take a look. So in my downloads, you can see I already have SSE fixes already in, you know, in my download tab. And this is what you need to do. The first time I ran this, and this is kind of a, a weird thing with Mod Organizer 2, just remember that we're talking about virtual file systems, and sometimes they're a little strange. My first attempt to do this, I installed it, and it said, okay, this is going to install to my data. It's going to install a folder called DLL plugins. That's exactly as we see in the structure. This is the correct structure. And inside, we have the two files, the .dll and the .ini. Yeah, that is correct. Even though it says no game directory, game data on the top level, it is okay. It's going to give you a warning. We're going to ignore it. We go down, there it is. Now we're going to drag it up all the way to the very top because remember this is a priority list and it will load the first mod in this order here into the game. So my thinking was, okay, it's going to load this first, which is what I want. We're going to launch the game. We made it in and now we're going to quit right back out of it because we don't need it. So what happens when you don't have this properly set up, when you go check your log, fail to get search handle to data backslash DLL plugins backslash DLL. It failed to get it. And that perplexed me a little bit. I couldn't figure out quite why. And it has something to do with the way the file is set up. Okay, now I know you're saying, well, I thought Mod Organizer is supposed to be better. It is better because it keeps the files clean. It keeps your data folder completely clean. Well, in this application, we're going to do something a little bit different. Remember the file structure for this mod. If you ever want to see it, you just double click on it, go over to file structure, and then this DLL plugins is the folder that we're concerned about. Okay, actually, let's just do this. We're going to rename it so I can just copy that name. Just that name right there. We're going to close it. Now, what I found you have to do is go back into your directory, back into, where, where, where are we at? Yep, data. And what you need to do is actually insert a new folder. Okay, and you're going to name it. Paste that name in. 
DLL plugins. There's nothing in there. Nothing in there. So you're not actually adding any data to your data folder. It is just a blank folder with nothing in it. Now, when you come back into Mod Organizer, you still have it activated. Let's find out what happens now. I'm going to run the game. And just like before, we're into the loading screen and I'm going to clip right back out of it. Okay, let's see what happened. We're going to open up our Skyrim directory one more time and go into our log. Checking data backslash DLL plugins FPS fix plugin dot DLL. Okay, and loaded. It is a very weird thing about Mod Organizer. Without having a folder first inside your data directory, even though it's blank, it doesn't know where to put SSE fixes. It's an odd thing, but that is the fix for it, is to have a blank folder that contains no data on its own inside your data folder. So just like I said, Steam, Steam Apps Common, Skyrim Special Edition, inside your data folder. And inside there, there's nothing, still nothing there. But it's working, and I tested it out, and it does work. So very strange peculiarity of Mod Organizer, but that is how the system works. As far as Nexus Mod Manager goes, you saw it. It's easy. Mod Organizer, that's how you get around it. If for whatever reason you wanted to go ahead and see the any file, there it is. You can still make all your adjustments to the any file inside of Mod Organizer. You don't have to have anything inside your data folder whatsoever. So everything's there. The any changes that you make inside of an individual mod doesn't work, even though the any editor doesn't for me. I don't know why. Other people said theirs works. That's kind of weird. But that is all uh, there is to it. It's very simple, but it is kind of a weird tweak you have to do to get Mod Organizer 2 to work. Now, in the next episode, and I had to break this into two, I was originally going to cover the Skyrim Special Edition Uncapper in one episode, but it became way too long because I'm actually writing stuff to actually, you know, for you guys to get off the Nexus. So I have to do a bunch more work. And that's going to be a separate one. And it's going to be following the information I gave you in this episode directly. And it has, you know, a direct correlation to how we install it because the Skyrim skill on Capper has its own DLL plugin loader. But because I think that SSE fixes is an essential mod, I'm using its plugin loader instead of using the Skyrim skill uncapper plugin loader itself. So we have to make some changes. I'll go through all that. And there's a lot to talk about with that one. So that's it for now, guys. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel. And I'm signing off.